Welcome to Freedom Field at Creekside High School. I'm Noah Schlicksa bringing you today's action live on Schlick Sports between the Creekside Knights and the St. Joseph Academy Flashes. These two got some history against each other. Creekside 4-2 all-time against St. Joseph Academy. They won a thrilling 10-7 game last year after dropping two straight to the Flashes, a game where Sean Ashenfelder had two triples. He'll be leading off for the Knights today in a game where Creekside really needs to get the bats going against the Safe Joseph Academy team that is currently red hot. The Flashes come in on a six-game win streak and are outscoring their opponents 52-10 to in that span. Hitting 312 as a team this season, they have been phenomenal. Tack on 33 extra base hits as well for this Flashes squad. They are a tough matchup for the opposing pitcher, which will be Quinn Wilfong today for the Knights. Creekside, though they've been solid this season, coming in at 7-6, and six, they're just 1-4 and four at home, looking to get back on track after a two-game series in Tallahassee, which they split, losing against Lincoln and winning 2-0 at Leon. The Knights got to get their bats going tonight to get a win. Should be a tough matchup against this St. Joseph Academy team that comes in at 9-3. and They have been phenomenal this season, coming off of a 5-4 win against Swanee. We're going to send you down to the fields now for the starting lineups and the national anthem ahead of this matchup. Introducing today's non-starters for St. Joseph's. Number three, Julian Antigua. Number five, Carlos Willis. Number six, Brody Ely. Number 15, Colin Dipple. Number 19, Hollis Ulmer. Number 20, Sean Miskowit. Number 27, Jacob Guthmiller. Number 41, Brett Baloney. Number 46, Neil Gorta. And now the starting lineup for the Flashes. Leading off playing third base, number 11, Connor Lewis. Batting second to shortstop, number two, Dayton Taylor. Batting third, the first baseman, number 10, Aiden Torres. Batting fourth is the catcher, number 13, Talon McDonald. Batting fifth, the center fielder, number 21, Camden Bisco. Batting sixth, the second baseman, number seven, Eli Bradshaw. Batting seventh, the right fielder, number eight, Garrison Wade. Batting eight, the designated hitter number 23, Gavin Comer. And batting ninth, the left fielder number 22, Patrick Malahi. Pitching this afternoon for the Flash is number nine, Braden Johns. Assistant coaches, Jake Hansen and Luke Taylor. And the head coach for St. Joseph's, Eric Hurley. Now let's meet the non-starters for your Creekside Knights. Number two, Aiden Benichek. Number four, Nick Romeo. Number seven, Tavern Blanzett. Number eight, Hunter Schlegel. Number nine, Drew Williams. Number 12, Jackson Kane. Number 15, Roman Vaselli. Number 17, Zach Jackson. Number 18, Hunter Zimmerman. Number 21, Josh Huber. Number 22, Micah Henson. Number 23, Gavin Dupre. And number 24, Hudson Hyatt. Yet now, tonight's defensive starters for your Creekside Knights. In left field, number 10, Matthew Bisham. In center field, number 20, Sean Ashenfelder. In right field, number 6, Michael Bisham. At third base, number 3, Connor Belazic. At shortstop, number five, Ty Martino. At second base, number one, Parker Morton. At first base, number 14, Adam Harvey. Behind the dish is number 13, Gavin Strunk. The designated hitter, designated hitter number 19, Carson McFarland. And taking the bump this evening for the Creekside Knights, number 16, Quinn Wilfong. 
Assistant coaches, Robbie McCluskey, Darren Lester, Chris Angelo, Tony Mazio, and the head coach for Creekside, Mr. Chris King. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we draw your attention to the American flag flying in center field. Please stand and remove your caps as we honor America with the playing of our national anthem. And it is time to play ball here on Schlick Sports. I am Noah Schlick, so bringing you today's action live on Schlick Sports between the Creekside Knights and the St. Joseph Academy Flashes. Time now to take a look at the starting lineups brought to you by Troy Silhan with Bank of England Mortgage. First off, the batting order for the Flashes who come in at 9-3, and, and they are swinging hot bats as a team. They're led off by Connor Lewis and Dayton Taylor. Aiden Torres, the first baseman, will be batting third, followed by Talon McDonald, Camden Biscop, and Eli Robshaw. 7-8-9 is Garrison Wade, Gavin Comer, and Patrick Mullahay. Out on the field for the Creekside Knights, they got Matt Bisham out in left, Sean Ashenfelder in center with Mike Bisham in right. On the infield, Connor Belizic mans the hot corner time, Martin and Parker Morton, the shortstop and second baseman up the middle. Adam Harvey, the first baseman, Tonight for the Creekside Knights and Gavin Strump behind the plate for Creekside. Taking the bump for the Knights in this one, the senior Quinn Wilfong. Wilfong making his second start, fourth appearance of the season. He stands at 6'0", 195 and is a senior. So far this year, he's gone eight and a third, got a one and one record and an ERA sitting at 1.68. Not a guy who's gonna strike out a ton of people. He forces a lot of soft contact. It's 70% of the time when a ball's put in play, it's weak contact. And most of the time, it's in the air, just 34% ground balls. He's a guy who's gonna force a lot of soft pop-ups with a fastball that he relies on heavily. In the mid 80s, he throws it about 80% of the time, also mixing in a curveball and a changeup. And the conditions out here today playing perfectly to what he wants to do. 73 degrees, it's a nice day out weather-wise, but the wind blowing in hard, 12 miles per hour, and gusts up to 21. This is a team that can hit for pop in St. Joseph, but with this wind blowing in and it being Creekside High School, not likely that anything's going to get out. With a guy like Will Fung, who forces a lot of contact in the air, Conditions fit perfectly to what he wants to accomplish today. The you're just tuning in and you're wondering why we got a wide shot today. Well, we're waiting on our cameraman, Matthew Green, to get here. He is coming back from a band event in Daytona. He should be here within the next 10 minutes. And then we'll get back to our regular camera angle zoomed in. But for now, you get a good view of this whole field it's coming together nicely. The grass getting greener as the season goes on. The backstop kind of filling in the sand right behind home plate. They had a new backstop put in this winter just a few weeks before the season when it was all finished up. And they're still going to get some padding put on that brick as first pitch a ball in on Connor Lewis. They've been a done a nice job out here. They always do with this field. 
one one count on Connor Lewis, the third baseman leading things off for the St. Joseph Flashes. He goes at a pitch outside. One and two. This is a Flashes offense that comes in averaging 7.3 runs per game. Very good team with the bats. Pitch outside misses 2-2. Two -two. Time called at the plate. Connor Lewis coming into this one at 371 and OPS up over 900. He's a junior standing at 5'10", 150. Skies one out into shallow right field. Michael Bisham there makes the catch for out number one. With one away, that'll bring up the shortstop number two, Dayton Taylor. Dayton Taylor, the next up for this Flashes team. Taylor this season batting 429, three home runs, 14 RBIs. And striking out just 11% of the time as well. One of the few dangerous hitters at the top of this order. One away, however, is Will Fong into the full windup. Fires a curveball that misses ball one. Will Fong, a guy that, as I mentioned, Going to rely heavily on his fastball. He's got a fastball in the mid-80s, throws that 80% of the time. And there it was right there. High sky down the left field line, ranging into foul territory and making the catch is Matthew Bisham. Too quickly gone now with two in the lanes, first the inning. First baseman, number 10, Aiden Torres. So that will bring up Aiden Torres, the three-hole hitter, who is as dangerous as anybody in this lineup. Been 300, three home runs, eight RBIs. Got a good arm out on the mound as well. Last year, went three for four with an RBI double against Creekside. Takes ball one. Quinn Wilfong, not a guy who's been filling up the zone as much as he'd probably like this year. But he doesn't end up, he hasn't walked too many guys. He's been able to find his way back into counts at times and been a little wild here early on, but looking to find the zone again down 3 0. But first, we'll have a mound visit here from Gavin Strump. He comes back off the mound and we'll have a 3 0 pitch coming up. Torres committed to New Orleans to play at the next level, and he'll walk his first time up to the plate right here. So Torres will take first base. That brings up the catcher, McDonald, the cleanup man with one on and two outs. McDonald hitting 433 on the season, just absurd numbers from some of these guys at the plate. A lot of experience on this team, however. This is a squad that had just three seniors last season. Returned 11 players from last year's team. Pickoff move to first and back safely is Aiden Torres. Another pickoff move and he's back again. Pitch misses inside, and Torres on the go. Throw down a good one from Strump, but the tag not in time from Parker Morton. That pitch got away from Gavin Strump behind the plate. Stayed in front of him, but he had to move a little bit to his left to get to it. 
And Torres, who stands at 6'6", 220. Showing off some speed, getting to second base. The 2-0 pitch. Misses low, ball three, and that will bring out Chris King for a quick mound visit as Quinn Wilfong struggling to find the zone in this first inning. Just a few quick words from King coming out from the dugout. Chris King in his seventh season as Creekside head coach, 103 and 60. In his 163 games as Creekside head coach. Caught in another 3 0 count. Will Fong now thrown seven straight balls. After getting two flyouts to start the inning. And now I think the infield, I'm telling Will Fong he's got to come set. Some, I think that's what I heard. 3 0. Fastball right down the middle. Will Fong finds the zone three and one. Peek back at second base. Another one and the pitch. Misses down and away for ball number four. Two on, two out for the St. Joseph Academy flashes. That brings up Camden Biscup, the center fielder, as we got a courtesy runner for the catcher, and that's Carlos Willis. Biscup at the plate this season has driven in eight runs. He's looking to get the flashes on the board early. It's a fastball down the middle out to center field, drifting into right center. Ashenfelder makes the catch for out number three. A couple walks with two outs. Doesn't cause any damage. We're on to the bottom of the first inning. First chance for the Knights coming up next. They are back together again and talking sports in Jacksonville. Brent Martineau and former Jags player Austin Lane from 10 a.m. until 1 p.m on all the social media platforms and for the first time ever in Jacksonville, a 24-7 streaming network. It's Action Sports Jacks 24-7. Download the Action News Jacks Now app and get sports all day every day. It's on Roku, Apple TV, Google TV, and many other platforms. Action Sports Jacks 24-7 and the new Brenton Austin Show, 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. Time now for the bottom of the first inning on Schlick Sports. We'll take a look at the starting lineups brought to you by Troy Silhan with Bank of England Mortgage. The batting order for the Creekside Knights, led off by Sean Ashenfelder, Mike Bisham batting second time, Martino in the three spot, Adam Harvey batting cleanup for the Knights, followed by Connor Balazic and Carson McFarlane. Gavin Strump batting seventh and cleaning, rounding things out. It's Parker Morton and Nat Bisham. On the mound for the Flashes, Braden Johns. Standing at 6'1", 175, the junior. 
Out on the bump tonight for the flashes. He's got a fastball, curveball, slider, changeup, according to Perfect Game. Johns has appeared in four games this year, pitching 14 and two thirds on the mound. He's got a three and one record in ERA at 477. Ashenfelder, first pitch swinging. Grounds out to third base, and now it's time to look at the fielding alignment for the flashes. Out in left field, Patrick Mullahay, Camden Biscup in center, Garrison Wade out in right. On the infield, Connor Lewis, the third baseman, Dayton Taylor, the shortstop, and Eli Robshaw at second. Aiden Torres, the first baseman, Talon McDonald behind the plate. And out on the mound is Braden Johns. Second pitch to Michael Bisham founds found the zone. Strike one. One one count. And there's strike two on the junior right fielder. He's been held hitless his last three games, looking to break out of a little slump. He swings and grounds one over to first base. Waving off the pitcher. Torres makes the play unassisted. Two up, two down to start the inning for the Creekside Knights. Now will bring up Ty Martineau with two away. Ty Martineau. Martineau, been red hot this season. 13 game on base streak, an eight game hit streak was snapped against Leon on Saturday. Tough way to end it too, just three plate appearances, he walked in two of them. 1-0. Takes another pitch down below the zone. Two balls, no strikes on Ty Martineau. Full wind up from the lefty Johns. Strike one on the outside part of the plate. Two quickly going for Creekside in the bottom of the first. Now 3-1. Full windup and the 3-1 offering. Martineau thought it was ball four. Home plate umpire disagrees. It's three and two. Full count. Here's the pitch. That's ball four up high. So a runner on base for Creekside. With two gone, and that brings up Adam now Harvey. The First baseman, number 14. First baseman Adam in the Harvey. cleanup spot, batting 344 on the season. Martineau over on first base. Creekside, an aggressive team on the bases. Foul ball, strike one, and... Out in the outfield, we have got a kid running around with their dog behind the fence. That's just a little puppy. I wish my cameraman could hear me so we could get a shot of that. That's pretty adorable. Two strikes on Adam Harvey. The runner on first and two away. Ball down low, one and two. Runner on first, Martineau. Two gone. Harvey fouls one back, stays alive. Adam was off to a red hot start to the season. Gone two games. Without recording a hit. Now Martineau in motion. Curveball above the zone. Two and two as Martineau takes second base. Right. 
Harvey still batting 344 on the season. He's got eight RBIs. Looking to drive in Martineau. Curveball outside, three and two. Belizic on deck. Payoff pitch. Fastball popped up into shallow right field. Coming in on it is Wade. He makes the catch for out number three. Knights get a runner into scoring position coming off the walk. That brings us to the second inning as they can't bring him home. We're scoreless through one on Schlick Sports. Attention sports fans of Southwest Jacksonville. Are you prepared to defend against the greatest opponent of our time? I'm not talking about a rival team. I'm talking about cyber threats. Did you know that in 2023, over 60% of small to mid-sized businesses experienced a cyber attack and only 14% were considered prepared to handle the attack. Don't let one setback sideline your success. Here to help is CMIT Solutions of Southwest Jacksonville, your local IT managed services provider for small to mid-sized businesses in and around Southwest Jacks. Tune in to our free podcast on cybersecurity where we break down the complex threats in just 15 minutes per episode. Make the most of your drive time and defend your business like a champion. Stay safe, stay secure. Find us on YouTube at youtube.com slash at CMITSWJAX. A little puppy plate time out here at the ballpark behind the center field fence at Creekside High School. Top of the second inning, nothing, nothing. As Quinn Wilfong climbs the bump for six, seven, eight of the Flashes lineup. In the top of the second inning, we are scoreless. And time now for my keys to the game. Number one, strike early and strike often. Creekside, you need to get the bats going against the St. Joseph team. I believe this is a start where Wilfong could hold the flashes to numbers that are below what they normally put up. As he's a pitcher that really pitches, goes against their strengths really well. Number two, forcing weak contact, which is what Will Fong does. If he can continue to do that against a team that can really generate some power up at the plate, that'll be absolutely big for Will Fong's success in this game. And number three, limit mistakes on the base paths as Creekside has been caught doing that on a multitude of occasions this year. They had two caught stealing situations against Leon where that guys get caught on base and can't have that happen tonight. Ground ball out to short. Ty Martineau fields, throw on to first, took a hop on Adam Harvey, couldn't handle it. Tough one to pick out of the dirt. Now the right An field, error on Martino will allow the leadoff man to reach base, and that brings up Garrison Wade. One on, nobody out. Wade getting the start in right field for the St. Joseph Academy flashes. Batting just 176 on the season, but getting on base to the 300 mark. Pickoff move to first, back safely is Eli Robshaw. Swinging strike one. A one count on Garrison Wade. You can hear that wind blowing in hard. Mentioned the gust getting up to 21 miles per hour, kind of blowing in from that left field corner and sometimes shifting in from straightaway center field. Bunt laid down right back to Wilfong on the mound. Throws it on to first for out number one. But Rob Shaw into scoring position. And that brings up the D.H. Comer. Up the designated hitter number 23, Gavin Comer. 
Comer batting 188, five RBIs this year. The DH into that right-handed batter's box. Even with that low average, another guy getting on base at a high mark, 388. 381. 1-0 -oh count. Set is Will Fong. One on, one out. Pickoff move to second. Rob shot back in there. That was up high at his shoulder. <laughs> Fired that one over there, and Morton able to keep it in on the infield. Two zero on Comer. This is this early trend of struggling to find the zone has continued so far for Wilfong. Fly ball, foul ground down the right field line. That one is out of play. About 20 feet shy of my car, so we're safe. Two one count. Now three and one on Comer. Will Fong set. Here's the pitch. Foul back, three and two. This would be a big timeout if he can get him. And you're looking for the fastball right here. The 3 2 pitch. Here it comes. Swung on a miss, strike three. So he gets out number two with the runner still on second base. And that brings up Molehe, the nine hole hitter. Molehe this season batting 464, five RBIs. Kind of a second leadoff man in that nine hole spot. Pickoff move to second. And with Morton holding him close out at second, it's a decent sized gap between the first baseman, Harvey, and the second baseman, Morton, over at second. He sends it that opposite field way, but right at Harvey down that first base line. He makes the play unassisted. To end the inning, after a leadoff base runner, Will Fong able to work out of the jam. On to the bottom of the second inning, scoreless at Freedom Field. That One Painter First Coast is here for your home service needs. We specialize in residential and commercial interior and exterior painting, whole house pressure washing, cabinet refinishing, stucco repair, and more. Call 904-417-417. 3557 for your free estimate today.
Bottom of the second inning for Creekside as they got counter Belizic up at the plate. Five, six, seven, due up for the Knights in the second inning. 1-0, Belizic sends it up the middle. Fielded cleanly. Throw over first in time from Dayton Taylor. Out number one. That brings up McFarlane. Now batting with one away. The DH trying to get something going for the Knights. A lot of soft contact early on from Creekside. Only base runner via a two out walk. McFarlane, a guy who's had his ups and downs early on this season for Creekside. He's had some games where he looks absolutely phenomenal up at the plate. And he's come so close sometimes. He's getting unlucky a lot up at the plate. A lot of deep fly balls that just aren't quite getting enough carry. Came close to another home run that was caught at the wall. They kept track of warning track flyouts. He'd be pretty far up there. Ranked in the state. Three one count. With one out. Excuse me, two two. Next pitch low, now three and two. McFarlane on the season. Hitting two twelve, getting on base the four seventeen mark. It's been hit by six pitches in just 13 games. The three and two. Grounded sharply out to short. Gives Taylor a little bit of trouble. He recovers, throws on the first for out number two. Back to back ground outs to short. Leads off the bottom of the second for Creekside. And that brings up Gavin Strump, the catcher. Nice catcher, number 13, Gavin Strump. Strump, the catcher for the Knights. Just kind of hits a big contact guy up at the plate. Hitting 310 on the season. All of his hits have been singles. Foul's first pitch back. 0 oh, 1. These Creekside bats still silent so far up at the plate. In their last three games, they've hit 149. Previously on the season, they were hitting 306. After these previous three games, that number down to 273. Kind of falling into a team-wide slump. And it's not like they're not making contact either. They're putting the ball in play, which will oftentimes get the job done at the high school level. Striking out just 19% of the time, and that's actually down during this recent stretch where they've struggled at the plate at 17%. Majority of that contact, though, has been pretty soft. And also been either right at guys or just good defense. 3-1 misses low. Strump walks. Another two-out walk in the second. Creekside this time trying to do something with it. Parker Morton the next up. Now batting for the Creekside Knights. Number one, the second baseman, Parker Morton. A little mound visit after the walk. Is number 17, Zach Jackson. Zach Jackson will run for the catcher, Strump. Jackson, two with three stealing bases this year, was caught stealing against Leon late in that game on Saturday. Pop up on a two out bunt foul from Morton, 0 1. That was an interesting play, too. Sounds like Jackson might have just gotten the wrong sign or Chris King might have accidentally signaled a delayed steal, but it was a unique play. Pitch gets to the backstop. Jackson to second. Runner in scoring position for Parker Morton. Morton comes into this one batting 286, getting on base to the 500 mark. Go, 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 go. 
Coming off of the 0 for 2 effort against Leon. Looking to get back on track against the Flashes. Behind the fastball up. 1-2 count. Two outs. Runner on second again for Creekside in the second inning. The 1-2. Swung on and missed. Strike three. Same situation. Same result. Out number three in the second. Working out of another situation with the runner in scoring position. Johns escapes unscathed as we play on to the top of the third inning. Still nothing nothing on Schlick Sports. First Coast Lighting and Fans is a proud sponsor of Schlick Sports and Creekside Baseball. They have the area's largest selection of lights, fans, and home decor. Be sure to stop by and browse their location on Phillips Highway across from the Avenues Mall at 10130 Phillips Highway. They look forward to helping you with your lighting needs soon. Top of the third inning now on Schlick Sports as we got one, two, three, top of the order coming up for St. Joseph. In the third inning, we are scoreless through two. Connor Lewis leading things off, flew out to right his first time up. Takes ball one, one and oh. Feel like we're seeing Will Fung on the mound mix in a little more off speed than he's been using in this game, just trying to find that pitch. Gets a swing and strike one, one and one. Full wind up from Quinn Wilfong. Pitch misses low, two and one. He's struggling though to find the zone with those off speed pitches. It doesn't allow him too much of an opportunity to miss with his fastball. Three one count. Full wind up and the pitch. Misses up and in, ball four. Runner on first, third walk of the game already. Taylor the next up flew out to left, first pitch swinging. And I think he won't be as aggressive this time up. Wolfong's been good with runners on base. As there's a slow tapper to first, Harvey will get the force at one. Lewis over to second. He's in scoring position with one away. Now and that brings up Torres. Up the first baseman, number 10, Aiden Torres. Torres walked his first time up on four pitches. Creekside. Does have a base open at first. One of the more dangerous hitters in this lineup. We'll see how they attack Torres. Fastball just misses up and in. Didn't miss by too much. The 1 0. Outside, 2 0. That 
six pitches now that Aiden Torres has seen. All of them have been balls. Swing and strike one, runner in motion to third. Strump will hold as Lewis to third base on a wild pitch. Two one count on Aiden Torres. Now the infield in for Creekside is Hunter Schlegel getting ready in the bullpen. The two one offering. Swung on a miss, strike two. Two good off speed pitches getting Torres chasing low. What's he got in store right here? Curveball. Diving stop by Martin. Oh, it's short from his knees. Throws home and safe is Connor Lewis. Great effort by Martineau keeping that one on the infield. But in the end, Torres safe at first, Lewis safe at home. And Chris King going to go talk to the home plate umpire. I think he was wondering if he didn't touch the plate. Torres breaking for second. Fastball low. Strump can't handle it. Another runner into scoring position. Torres got really good speed for a guy of his size. one -oh inside. 2-0 -oh count on Talon McDonald. He walked his first time up. You got a feeling if he loses this batter, that could be it for Quinn Wilfong. The 2 0. Up and in, almost got him. 3 0 count on Talon McDonald. The 3-0 pitch. Misses low. That's ball four, and that will do it for Quinn Wilfong out on the mound. Runners on first and second with one away and one in in the top of the third. It's time now for a pitching change brought to you by Brightway Insurance, the Baselli Agency. Back after this on Schlick Sports. They are back together again and talking sports in Jacksonville. Brent Martineau and former Jags player Austin Lane from 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. on all the social media platforms and for the first time ever in Jacksonville, a 24-7 streaming network. It's Action Sports Jacks 24-7. Download the Action News Jacks Now app and get sports all day every day. It's on Roku, Apple TV, Google TV, and many other platforms. Action Sports Jacks 24-7 and the new Brenton Austin Show, 10 a.m. until 1 p.m.
Time now for our first pitching change brought to you by Brightway Insurance, the Baselli Agency. Into the game for Creekside, Hunter Schlegel coming off of a six-out save against Leon Schlegel on in relief in the top of the third inning. He inherits two runners on first and second with one out and one in in the top of the third inning. First man he faces, Camden Biscop. Lefty gets a first pitch strike on him. Schlegel, a guy who isn't the most consistent at finding the zone, but when he needs to bear down and throw strikes, he does. Still hasn't walked a man yet this season. He doesn't get hit very hard either. Into the game on the bases, number five, Carlos Willis. Grounder to third, Belizic on to second for one, throw to first, in time for a double play! Hunter Schlegel on in relief, gets the double play in three pitches to retire the side. But the Flashes able to plate one here in the top of the third. The Knights looking for a response when we return on Schlick Sports. Attention sports fans of Southwest Jacksonville. Are you prepared to defend against the greatest opponent of our time? I'm not talking about a rival team. I'm talking about cyber threats. Did you know that in 2023, over 60% of small to mid-sized businesses experienced a cyber attack, and only 14% were considered prepared to handle the attack? Don't let one setback sideline your success. Here to help is CMIT Solutions of Southwest Jacksonville your local IT managed services provider for small to mid-sized businesses in and around Southwest Jacks. Tune in to our free podcast on cybersecurity where we break down the complex threats in just 15 minutes per episode. Make the most of your drive time and defend your business like a champion. Stay safe, stay secure. Find us on YouTube at youtube.com slash at CMITSWJacks. Bottom of the third inning now on Schlick Sports. Creekside trails St. Joseph Academy 1-0 as they got Matt Bysham leading things off in the bottom of the third inning. First pitch, a fastball high, 1-0. Bysham getting the start on the field, which is something you don't see too often with him. The Knights' number one pitcher has been handling the bat a little bit more this season. Doubled in that game against Lincoln. He was the DH. Now 3-0 count from Braden Johns. Bisham one for five as that double drove in a run. And this time he walks on four pitches. Second walk he's drawn this year, third of the game. For John's on the mound. And that gets us back to the top of the order. The and Sean Ashenfelder. Center fielder number 20. Sean Ashenfelder. Ashenfelder homered on that trip to Tallahassee. Went deep to left field at Lincoln. Ashenfelder. 347 hitter. He's a guy who very aggressive. Up at the plate. Runner on first and a long peek over. Johns was in his windup. Still looking at first base. No one pitch fouled off. It's 0-2. Two strikes on Ashenfelder. Here it is. Curveball. 
Grounded out to short. This could be two. On to second for one. Throw to first. Not even close. Fielder's choice. That brings up Michael Bisham. Bisham grounded out to first his first time up. Made that move up from the heart of the order to second in the lineup. Takes a fastball high, 1-0. Creekside's got a runner on base and into scoring position each of the first two innings. They got a runner on first now in Ashenfelder, who was leaning out towards second when John started his pickoff move, able to get back safely, though. Ashenfelder in motion. He'll take second as the pitch gets to the backstop. Now he's going for three. The throw is wide. If it was a good one, he might have beat him. Ashenfelder on to third. And a runner just 90 feet away. Bisham got to put it in play in a 2-0 count. That was a dangerous, aggressive move right there. Ashenfelder, I think, kind of turned that corner a little slow at second base, not expecting to go for three. Corners in now. Bisham lines one just to the top of the Creekside dugout. One on, one out, and a 2-1 count. Creekside's already left two runners in scoring position. They can't afford to leave many more runs out on base. Come on, 3-1 on Michael Bisham. And he grounds this one down the first baseline. Torres handles, will step on the bag. It was hard contact, but it's ruled foul. So it's 3-2. And Bisham will live to see another pitch. The 3-2 line back up into center. That's down for a base hit. Ashenfelder scores from third. Bisham with the RBI single. We are back side up, even at one. Nice job of hitting a 3-2 count. And Bisham comes up big. Three straight hitless games. He was looking for something. And he gets the RBI single right there. A big one for the Creekside Knights. That brings up Martineau, one on, one out. Bisham, a big secondary lead, 1-0. Looked like at first he was breaking for second, then broke into a little slide. Johns to 2-0. And Johns is very worried about Bisham over at first base. He was worried as well about Ashenfelder. I don't think it's good for your windup when you're heading towards the plate, but you're still looking at the runner on first. Greek side. They've stolen 50 bases heading into the game. They got a few already tonight. This one popped down the third baseline, foul ground. That's down. 2-1. Two balls and a strike. 3-1, throw down to first. Safe is... Michael Bisham, three balls and a strike on time, Martineau. And there's ball four. So after the RBI single, Johns walks Martineau for the second time today. A little bit of trouble now. 
As after the tying run scores in Ashenfelder, the man who drove him in stands on second base, still only one out. And we're going to have a mound visit from the head coach of the St. Joseph Flashes team, Eric Hurley. Hurley in his third year as head coach for the Flashes. A local guy graduated from Wolfson High School, was a first-round pick of the Rangers in 2004 and made five appearances for them in 2008. And he's led this team to good places since taking over. Right now, they're on their best start since 2015, a year where they didn't lose until March 30th. A 9-3 and record. They've won six straight games. But now Creekside tied with them. 1-1 in the third. And they're trying to take the lead. Hurley and head back to the dugout. It's time now for Adam Harvey at the plate. Harvey into the right-handed batter's box. Corners in. Curveball misses low, 1-0. and Action in the pen. Can't see exactly who they have, but they do have a man up throwing. The 1-0. Skied out to center. Shallow center field coming in on it. It's down, but this could be a force out. And they're going to get Bisham at third. That's tough as a base runner, kind of no man's land. That was close. As coming off the bat, it looked like that one was going to get to the center fielder, Biscup, the but the, the wing kind of killed it. And it was very Kyle close. Bisham had to hold up and kind of stay put for a minute. Otherwise, he was going to get caught at second. But instead, he gets caught at third for out number two. And now laying down a two-out bunt. Connor Belizic, a bunt single. How about that play? Creekside. A little catch him off guard bunt with two outs. The third baseman, Belizic, gets it down. And it all comes to Carson McFarlane. Bases loaded. Two outs in the inning. He grounded out to short his first time up. Takes the first pitch low, ball one. one -oh count. Swings and misses. One and one. This one, lined in the left center field gap. That's down and will score at least two. Belizic digging for three. He is in. It's a two-run single for Carson McFarlane. And the Knights take a 3-1 lead. The Knights got their big time hitter to the plate with two outs, bases loaded, tie ball game. And that's what a guy like Carson McFarlane lives for. He drives in two, Knights with their first lead of the day, and now Strump to the plate. First pitch fastball in for a strike. He's swinging, that one grounded to third, throw to first in time for out number three. But Creekside plates three on the two-out rally in the bottom of the third inning. They lead by two, heading into the fourth. First Coast Lighting and Fans is a proud sponsor of Schlick Sports and Creekside Baseball. They have the area's largest selection of lights, fans, and home decor. 
Be sure to stop by and browse their location on Phillips Highway across from the Avenues Mall at 10130 Phillips Highway. They look forward to helping you with your lighting needs soon. Leading off the top of the fourth for St. Joseph's, the second baseman number seven, Eli Bradshaw. Top of the fourth inning on Schlick Sports, we got Eli Robshaw leading things off. The top of the fourth inning, the flashes down for the first time in this game by a score of 3-1. And now, not sure what's going on down the first baseline, but... I think they're having a conversation about Gavin Strump talking to the umpires. So they kind of broke up that conversation and Chris King saying never a word, not again, just say yes sir. First pitch strike, 0-1 on Rob Shaw. One and one. Rob Shaw's first time up reached on an error. Pops this one up on the infield. Parker Morton calling for it. He makes the catch. One down in the fourth inning. Garrison one Wade the next up. up. Right number eight, Garrison Wade. No official at bat for him as his first time up. Advanced Rob Shaw with a sack bunt. Final line on Quillen Wilfong, the Creekside starter. Goes two and a third, one hit, one run. It was earned. He walked four while striking out one. Schlegel came in in relief. The top of the third inning, got the double play. Now base is clear for him, gets the pop out. And a 1-0 count on Garrison Wade. Curve ball, misses above the zone. 2-0. Numbers on Schlegel heading into the game. He'd appeared in four games, gone seven and a third, all out of the pen. No hits, two runs, none of them earned. He struck out nine heading into this game. Only allowed one free base on a hit by pitch, and he earned the save against Leon. This one skied out into left. Catch is made by Matt Bisham. Good play out in left field, tracking it to the line. No, and he gives a little that archery that celebration back to the dugout. Gavin Comer. That brings up Gavin Comer. Kind of a half diving play out down the left field line. He's just told that the dugout told him to use two hands. And now a pop up on the infield. Calling for it, Strump runs into Belizic, and he makes the catch. 
for out number three. On to the bottom of the fourth inning. One, two, three frame for Hunter Schlegel. Still 3-1 Creekside. They are back together again and talking sports in Jacksonville. Brent Martineau and former Jags player Austin Lane from 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. on all of the social media platforms and for the first time ever in Jacksonville, a 24-7 streaming network. It's Action Sports Jacks 24-7. Download the Action News Jacks Now app and get sports all day every day. It's on Roku, Apple TV, Google TV, and many other platforms. Action Sports Jacks 24-7 and the new Brenton Austin Show, 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. Leading off the bottom of the fourth. The bottom of the fourth inning. And lean things off. Parker Morton. The Knights with the 3-1 lead trying to add on after a three-run frame in the third. Schlegel tosses a 1-2-3 inning in the top half of the fourth inning. Fastball at the knees, 0-2. Morton struck out his first time up. 0-2 pitch, curveball, shot back up the middle, coming in off the glove of Taylor. Safe at first, Parker Morton. That was kind of a tough angle that Taylor took to it. Coming in, charging that ball. Took a little hop coming off that infield grass and he couldn't handle it. So on the air, Morton on first. Matt Bisham up at the plate, reached on a four-pitch walk his first time up. Runner in motion, he swings and misses. Throw down to second base, not in time. But they're gonna call him out on a hitter's interference. That's terrible. And I am not sure. They're gonna call Matt. I am not sure about that call because Bisham just swung, and then he, his momentum was taken in. He got out of the way. So Morton to first, and they call Bisham out. Now step into the play for the Knights. Center fielder number 20, Sean Ashenfelder. Yeah, right here, looking at the replay, Bisham kind of fell, but he ducked to try to get out of the way. One out. A runner on first, one out. One out. Fly ball out to right field. Garrison Wade under it. Out number two. That brings up Michael Bisham. One for two at an RBI single just an inning ago. Right fielder number six, Michael Bisham. And oh, how that hitter's interference call has changed this inning. Out number one, runner back to first instead of runner in scoring position, nobody out. Fly out to right. Now runner on first, two outs. Runner in motion, swung on and missed from Michael Bisham. Throw to second base in time. Caught stealing for out number three. 
That'll take us on to the fifth. Still 3-1 Creekside when we return on Schlick Sports. Attention sports fans of Southwest Jacksonville. Are you prepared to defend against the greatest opponent of our time? I'm not talking about a rival team. I'm talking about cyber threats. Did you know that in 2023, over 60% of small to mid-sized businesses experienced a cyber attack and only 14% were considered prepared to handle the attack? Don't let one setback sideline your success. Here to help is CMIT Solutions of Southwest Jacksonville, your local IT managed services provider for small to mid-sized businesses in and around Southwest Jacks. Tune in to our free podcast on cybersecurity where we break down the complex threats in just 15 minutes per episode. Make the most of your drive time and defend your business like a champion. Stay safe, stay secure. Find us on YouTube at youtube.com slash at CMITSWJAX. Top of the fifth inning now on Schlick Sports. 9-1-2, due up for St. Joseph Academy. Patrick Mullahay. Leading things off, 0-1. Curveball. Foul back, 1-2. and two. Hunter Schlegel on for another inning of work. Came in, got the double play, then a 1-2-3 inning in the fourth. And good out of the bullpen. Now a ground ball over to third base. Counter Belizic throw on to first, one away. Oh, one out one that brings up the here in the order. fifth inning. Third that brings up Connor Lewis. Lewis. If you add up all the innings Schlegel's pitch, he is, through multiple appearances out of the bullpen, thrown a complete high school game of a no-hitter. Now he's gone nine no-hit innings. Obviously, if he was going in a start, not be the case. But he's been really good, point being out of the pen. A lot of soft contact, still no hits, which is why Lewis, after I saying that, he is about to get that first hit against Hunter Schlegel right here. <laughs> 3 0 count. And he walked him. Well, there's the first walk of the season for Hunter Schlegel. That brings up Dayton Taylor, who's 0 for 2. Next up, the shortstop, number two, Dayton Taylor. Pickoff move to first. Safe as Lewis. One on, one out, top of the fifth inning. 3-1. Creekside leads the St. Joseph Academy Flashes. Currently riding a six-game win streak. Now win streak in danger as we enter the late stages of this ballgame. Runner in motion as the pitch skips away from Strump. Lewis now in scoring position. A 1-0 count. Let's 
Swinging strike one. Looks like Micah Henson starting to stretch in the Creekside dugout. The 1-1 one, one gets away from Strump. Now Lewis will hold at third. Adam Harvey had to come in from first to get that one as it skipped down the first base line. 2-1, infield comes in for Creekside. And Chris King going to come out of the dugout to talk to Hunter Schlegel. Not Schlegel. The infield umpire. Ty Martineau sitting behind the pitcher's mound, emptying dirt out of his cleat. And I think the umpire expecting the ball. That was an interesting mound visit. Not sure if they were talking about his delivery or what, but who knows? Schlegel steps off as they call Martino in. The 2 1. Strike, called a ball low. Three one, that one misses low for ball four. Back to back walks now for Hunter Schlegel. Runners at the corners now with one away. Goes the first baseman number ten, Aiden Torres. That brings up Aiden Torres. Micah Henson going out to the bullpen. Looks like. Hunter Zimmerman as well. Pickoff move to first, back safely is Dayton Taylor. Two on, one out. Torres takes a fastball low. Schlegel's got to bring these pitches up in the zone. He's nibbling the bottom of the zone. It's not being, he's either missed low or he's come close and it's not being called. That's obviously not a spot in the zone where you want to attack in this situation when it's not working. You got to find a way to bring that ball up. One one foul back. One ball and two strikes. The one two pitch. Swung on him and strike three. Big time strikeout for Hunter Schlegel. Runners at the corners, two no, gone. That brings up, up Talon McDonald. McDonald's walked twice in this game. He's into the right-handed batter's box. Curveball, strike one. Oh, one count. Pickoff move to first. And back safely is Dayton Taylor. That's an interesting move. Line drive, right center field. Ashenfelder in pursuit, dives, and it's past him. Will roll to the wall. Hey, for the plate is Taylor. 
Morton going to throw to third. We are back even at three. So McDonald comes up big for the flashes. A two run double. And now batting. Number 21, the center fielder, Camden Biscup. That brings up Biscup. Runner on second, two outs, and two in. Biscup 0 for 2. Willis, the runner at second. Courtesy runner for the catcher, McDonald. Fastball high, ball one. The 1 0 pitch. Fastball misses inside. Two balls, no strikes. Another fastball misses, 3-0. and Schlegel got to find the zone. Likely won't be swinging here. Then after that, you're looking for a ground ball or something soft to get out of the inning. 3-0, strike one. Three balls and one strike on Camden Biscup. Foul ball, strike two. Back tied at three in the top of the fifth. And Schlegel looking to keep it that way. The 3 2 to Biscup, gonna have to wait as he steps off and looks back. Willis. The 3 2. Foul back, stays alive. That wind had died down for a moment, now it's blowing in from center field. Another 3-2 pitch. And he walked him. Runner going for third. Strump going to hold on. Runners to the corners with two away. And that will most likely do it for Hunter Schlegel. I know they're going to leave him in there. I saw King walk out and Micah Henson kind of came in from the bullpen. Number seven. They're going to try and let Schlegel get out of this inning. Runners at the corners of two away. Robshaw. Robshaw. 0 for 2, reached on an error. Strike one. The 0-1 sky to right. Tracking towards the line, Michael Bisham makes the catch. Four out number three. They're able to get the runners stranded at the corners. However, the flashes able to tie it back up with two in the top of the fifth. On to the bottom of the fifth inning, even at three. That one painter, First Coast, is here for your home service needs. We specialize in residential and commercial interior and exterior painting, whole house pressure washing, cabinet refinishing, stucco repair, and more. Call 904-417-3557 for your free estimate today.
You're looking at our score through four and a half. As Creekside got two, three, four coming up. Off Bottom of the fifth the inning. Led off by Michael Mike Bisham. Mike Bisham. Bisham. One for two, RBI single in the third. This time he sends one right to the first baseman. Torres makes the play out number one. One pitch, one out. Ty Martin though the next up. No official plate appearance, uh, no official at bat. Two plate appearances, two walks for him. Looking at the box score in between innings. Through five on the mound. Creekside has given up three runs on just one hit, and that was the two-run double from McDonald. Creekside has had a lot of walks, one error. That's come back to bite him. Still tied at three, the Knights bats. Trying to give him the lead again. One out and a 1-1 one, one count on Ty Martineau. Skies one to left field. Molahe makes the catch. Two down. Two quick outs for Creekside. And that brings up Adam Harvey. Adam Harvey. Harvey in this one. 0 for 2. Really should be 1 for 2. He's got a blooper to center field that didn't count as a hit because it was kind of a spot where Michael Bisham got caught trying to stay close to that second base bag because it looked like Biscup or even the shortstop Taylor had a chance at it. It dropped and it turned into an 8-5 fielder's choice. Not something you see every day. A 1-1 count on Adam Harvey. And he swings and misses at strike two. Grounder on the infield grass, coming in from third base and making the play, a good one at that. Connor Lewis gets Harvey for out number three. And that is exactly what the Flashes needed after Platon two to tie it in the top of the fifth. They get a one, two, three inning in the bottom of the fifth. Three, three, as we play on to the sixth on Schlick Sports. They are back together again and talking sports in Jacksonville. Brent Martineau and former Jags player Austin Lane from 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. on all the social media platforms and for the first time ever in Jacksonville, a 24-7 streaming network. It's Action Sports Jacks 24-7. Download the Action News Jacks Now app and get sports all day every day. It's on Roku, Apple TV, Google TV, and many other platforms. Action Sports Jacks 24-7 and the new Brenton Austin Show, 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. Top of the sixth inning, and it's time now for a pitching change brought to you by Brightway Insurance, the Baselli Agency. On in relief for the Creekside Knights, Michael Bisham. Bisham making his fifth appearance of the season. In four appearances, he's had one start going eight innings. Struck out 13 while only walking five. An ERA of 5.25. However, Bisham out of the bullpen has been lights out during his time at Creekside. Since the beginning of last season, he has not allowed an earned run out of the bullpen. He's got 7-8-9 coming up in the sixth. And that's led off by Garrison Wade. 
First pitch swinging. It's a blooper. Out behind shortstop Ty Martineau backtrack and makes the catch. One quickly gone in the sixth inning. We'd like to thank our situational sponsors here on Schlick Sports. Troy Silhan with Bank of England Mortgage, Brightway Insurance, the Baselli Agency, and Triple Crown Fence. Call today at 305-331-9377. Ball one to Gavin Comer, who's 0 for 2 in this game. Full windup and the pitch from Michael Bisham. Chopped to third. Belozic over to first. Two up, two down to start the sixth inning. And now two down Fast start out of the bullpen for Michael two. Bisham. Patrick Malay. That brings up Malahi. Actually got a correction on something I said earlier. Creekside has allowed three runs on two hits. Aiden Torres singled back in the third inning. That was a fielder's choice. Well, I take back my correction. Back up the middle, Molahe with the single. Now with two outs, a runner on first. Flashes roll back to the top of the order. This is the third baseman, number 11, Connor Lewis. Lewis up at the plate. Final line on Hunter Schlegel coming out of relief for Quinn Wilfong. Goes two and two-thirds, allowing one hit, two runs. Both of them earned three walks and one strikeout. Another base hit, Connor Lewis. Back-to-back -back singles now for the flashes. Runners on first and second with two outs. That'll bring up the shortstop, number two, Dayton Taylor. So Taylor, who's 0 for 2 with a walk, got a runner in scoring position trying to take the lead. Two on, two out. First pitch. Misses inside, 1-0. Swing and a miss, ball and a strike on Dayton Taylor. Out of the stretch. The one one from Bisham. Swung on and into right. Matt Bisham fields. His throw to the plate will hold the runner over at third base. Base is now loaded. It looked for a second like Molahe was going to go home, but after back-to-back -back outs to open up the inning, three straight now singles brings it to Aiden Torres with the bases loaded. Hunter Zimmerman out to the bullpen along with Micah Henson. That is Bisham. First pitch to Torres. Curveball misses low. 1 0. The 1 0 offering. Fastball up high. Did he go? No, he did not. Duo count. The pitch to Torres. Foul back. Strike one. Torres 0 for 2 with the walk in this one. 2 1 count. Curveball. Sky to left. Schlegel makes the catch to end the inning. 
On to the bottom of the sixth. Bisham with two outs and the bases loaded. Escapes without a scratch. Bottom of the sixth inning coming up next. Still 3-3 between the Flashes and the Knights. Attention sports fans of Southwest Jacksonville. Are you prepared to defend against the greatest opponent of our time? I'm not talking about a rival team. I'm talking about cyber threats. Did you know that in 2023, over 60% of small to mid-sized businesses experienced a cyber attack and only 14% were considered prepared to handle the attack? Don't let one setback sideline your success. Here to help is CMIT Solutions of Southwest Jacksonville your local IT managed services provider for small to mid-sized businesses in and around Southwest Jacks. Tune in to our free podcast on cybersecurity where we break down the complex threats in just 15 minutes per episode. Make the most of your drive time and defend your business like a champion. Stay safe, stay secure. Find us on YouTube at youtube.com slash at CMITSWJacks. Time now for a pitching change brought to you by Brightway Insurance, the Baselli Agency. Brody Ely on in relief of Braden Johns. The senior stands at 5'8", 185 in three appearances this year. He's gone six and a third, 111 ERA. Opponents hitting just 136 off of him. The senior enters a tie ball game in the bottom of the sixth. And he's got 5'6'7", due up. Final line on the starter for the Flashes, Braden Johns. He goes five innings, allowing three hits, three runs, three earned. He had four walks to just one strikeout. Creekside continuing that trend of avoiding strikeouts up at the plate. Counter Belizic leading things off in the sixth inning, a 1-0 count. A wild throw over the head of Ely on the mound. Second baseman Rob Shaw there to collect it for him. It's Belizic, McFarlane, and Strump trying to take the lead back ahead of the seventh. Belizic, the foul tip, strike one. Belizic in this game, one for two with a bunt single. Beautiful two out bunt executed down that third baseline his last time up. This one, a fastball escapes. Ely and hits Belizic a little too far up and in. Hit by pitch, gets the leadoff man on. And that brings up McFarlane. You wonder here how aggressive Creekside wants to be with Belizic on the bases. He's got good speed for a guy who's normally a catcher, also has played second and today at third for Creekside. An aggressive team on the base paths, the Creekside Knights. Stays put, fastball misses for ball one to McFarlane. He came up big his last time up. McFarlane with the two run single in the third, gave Creekside the lead. Haven't been able to add anything since. The flashes have since tied. Belizic is four for six, stealing bases this year. Curveball misses. No, catches the zone inside. 
part of the plate. One and one. The catcher McDonald has shown he's got a good arm in this game. Already caught, I believe, Parker Morton. Yes, it was, trying for second base. 1-1 so one, one count, Belizic with a good lead at first. Ely set. Another pitch low, 2-1. McFarlane with the ground out in that single in this game. The 3-1, skied out to right. Backtracking is Wade. Ranging to his right makes the catch. Excuse me, ranging to his left makes the catch. One away. Now batting with one away. The catcher number 13, Gavin Strump. Strump the next up for Creekside. He's 0 for 1 with a walk. Runner on first with one out. Morton on deck. First pitch fastball right down the middle, 0 and 1. I think if they're going to send Belizic, it would be in these next couple pitches. He's going on 0-1. Pitch a strike. Throw down is high and into center field. Belizic safe in scoring position. The count 1-1. One, one. one out, one on, and that's Belizic on second base. Corners in, expecting a bunt. The 1-1 one, one pitch to Strump. Catches the zone for strike two. On deck, Morton. The 1-2 pitch. Curveball misses down and away. Two balls and two strikes on the Creekside catcher. Strump is just one RBI on the season right here. Just looking to put the ball in play. Stepping off is Ely. Be nice to put this ball on the ground. And at least advance Belizic to third. The 2 2. Swung on and skied foul out of play down the right field side. The 2-2, two -two. just misses. Could have gone either way, a brave take from Gavin Strump. The 3-2. Full count, pitch misses, low ball four. Runners on first and second for Morton. He's reached on an error and struck out in this game. And now a little now visit. One. Quick Morton. one with Ely on the bump. We'll see how the Knights play this with one out. You got Matt Bisham on deck. In a long conference, the catcher McDonald back at the plate, but the infield just now stopping their conversation on the mound with Ely. Two on with one out for Parker Morton. He's got one RBI on the season. 
Now another conference on the bump. And out comes Eric Hurley. I think they're trying to discuss the infield positioning right here. I don't think Creekside bunts here. Especially if the corners are in. I don't think they want to give up an out and get it to two outs of two in scoring position for a guy in Matt Bisham who all in all hasn't gotten too many high school at bats. I think if it was a guy at the top of the order like Ashenfelder or Bisham on deck, they'd consider it more. Or Matt B Mike Bisham. Right here, I think Creekside was looking for a base hit from Parker Morton. Takes the first pitch for strike one. Oh, one. McDonald setting up in a similar spot. Stepping off Azili. The 0-1 to Morton. Runners getting way off. Think Belizic. I didn't see what Zach Jackson did, who's running for Strump, but Belizic kind of broke halfway down the line before thinking better of it. Morton showing bunt on 1-1. One, one. It's a squeeze. Belizic going for third. He is dead to rights. Jackson to second. Now Belizic getting stern words from Chris King. One, two, count. Two outs, runner on second. Fly ball, right field, coming in on it is Wade. He makes the catch for out number three. And look at that, mistake on the bases. Cost Creekside an inning. We're on to the seventh, still 3-3. Three, three. That One Painter First Coast is here for your home service needs. We specialize in residential and commercial interior and exterior painting, whole house pressure washing, cabinet refinishing, stucco repair, and more. Call 904-417-3557 for your free estimate today. Leading off the top of the seventh for St. Joseph is the catcher, number 13, Talon McDonald. Top of the seventh inning and after Creekside loses a golden opportunity in the sixth inning. It's still 3-3 and heart of the order coming up for St. Joseph in the seventh. McDonald leading things off, takes a fastball up and in, ball one.
Time called at the plate. One zero. Takes a fastball for strike one. Foul ball strike two. Bisham in his second inning of work. Got himself into a little bit of two out trouble after getting the first two men down. Back to back to back singles. Got the bases loaded but he escaped without allowing a run. Almost got McDonald to pitch just a little outside. Two two. Out to short. Martino Fields throw on to first in time. One gone. One away for Biscop. That'll bring up the center fielder number twenty-one, Camden Biscop. Camden 0 for two. With a walk in this game, flew out back in the first, grounded into a double play in the third. Full windup and the first pitch. Just misses 1-0. Full wind up, up and in, 2-0. Deep breath from Michael Bisham. The 2-0, just misses, three balls, no strikes. Three-0 offering, ball four, four pitch walk. Gets a runner on base with one away. Robshaw the next up. He's 0 for 3. This is a St. Joseph team that came into this game averaging over seven runs per game, hitting 312 as a team. They've got four hits in this game. And just three runs home. Now, trying to take the lead for the first time since the third inning. Runner on first, one away. Fly ball, right center field. Tracking Matt Bisham, called off by Ashenfelder who makes the catch. Two away. Two hands from the dugout. And now a two away, that brings up the right fielder number eight, Garrison Wade. Creekside's had a few drop fly balls out in the outfield this year. They've had a big emphasis on the fundamentals of two hands in recent games. We've heard that phrase a lot. Wade, fouls one off, 0-1. One on, two out. One strike, ground ball. Stopped by Harvey, steps on the bag for out number three. Creekside puts a zero up on the scoreboard for St. Joseph and the top of the seventh. Chance to walk it off when we return on Schlick Sports. First Coast Lighting and Fans is a proud sponsor of Schlick Sports and Creekside Baseball. They have the area's largest selection of lights, fans, and home decor. Be sure to stop by and browse their location on Phillips Highway across from the Avenues Mall at 10130 Phillips Highway. They look forward to helping you with your lighting needs soon.
Bottom of the seventh inning, Creekside. A chance to walk it off. Tied at three. 9-1-2, due up for the Knights. It all starts with Matt Bisham. First pitch, fastball up and in. And just a smile from his coach at third base, Chris King. Hands on his hips, smile. Something that doesn't need to be said. Wear it. 1-0. Sky a mile high into left. Tracking and under it to make the catch. Malahe. One gone. I'll bring up Ashenfelder. He's 0 for 3 in this game. Very much due. Ashenfelder lately has been getting under a lot of pitches, I feel like. A lot of flyouts. Right here, you just got to focus on line drive back up the middle. Chops one down the third base line. 0-1. Oh, One out, nobody on. Ball low, one ball, one strike on Ashenfelder. Michael Bisham on deck. Curveball misses, down and in. 2-1 now. Brody Ely got into a little trouble there in the sixth, was able to escape. One out, nobody on the 2-1 pitch. Ashenfelder, that one was inside. It might have hit him if he didn't swing. 2-2. Two -two. A 2-2 two -two count on Sean Ashenfelder. Full wind up, the pitch. Grounded out to short. Taylor throws to first. Beat him by a step. Out number two. Mike Bisham next up for Creekside. The Knights got those three runs in the bottom of the third, but quiet outside of that. I'll bring up the pitcher number six, Michael Bisham. And Bisham looking to change that with two outs, bottom of the seventh. Ball misses low, 1-0. Full wind up. Second pitch to Bisham. Misses again, two balls, no strikes. I don't see him swinging 2-0 right here with two outs. Creekside just looking for a base runner. They got a good contact hitter in Martineau on deck. Count runs to 3 0. Or no, they called that a strike? 2 1. Grounds one to short. Fielded by Taylor. Out number three to end the inning. Well, we got some free baseball between the Flashes and the Knights. Top of the eighth coming up next on Schlick Sports. They are back together again and talking sports in Jacksonville. Brent Martineau and former Jags player Austin Lane from 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. on all the social media platforms and for the first time ever in Jacksonville, a 24-7 streaming network. It's Action Sports Jacks 24-7. Download the Action News Jax Now app and get sports all day every day. It's on Roku, Apple TV, Google TV, and many other platforms. 
Action Sports Jacks 24-7 and the new Brenton Austin Show, 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. Top of the eighth inning now on Schlick Sports. We got 8-9-1 due up in extra innings for the St. Joseph Academy Flashes. Gavin Comer, the DH, leading things off against Michael Bisham. Takes ball one, 1-0. One oh. To recap, the innings of, re of regulation St. Joseph Academy took the lead the top of the third inning, 1-0. Then the Knights pounced for three in the bottom of the third. And top of the fifth inning, St. Joseph, after a couple walks, a two-run double got us tied, and we've been deadlocked at three since. Creekside threatened in the sixth, but a caught stealing in with a runner in scoring position. And a fly out ended that threat. Harvey will not get to it in foul ground. Still 2 2. It's anyone's ball game here in the extras. Two two. Fouled off. Another foul ball. Comer keeps fighting. Another 2-2. Two, two. Fastball misses away. 3-2 count now. Nobody on, no out. The 3-2. Swung on and missed, strike three. A big K for Michael Bisham. One away in the top of the eighth inning. Now it's one down. That brings up the left fielder number 22, Patrick Malahi. Malahi the next up. In the sixth, he led the Flashes to their biggest threat to take the lead. And that was when he singled to start off a strand of three straight against Michael Bisham. They loaded the bases with two out. Bisham got a fly out to end the inning. This time the Flashes looking to recreate that situation. But for them, they want a different result. One out, the 1-1. One, one. Up high, two balls, one strike. Full wind up from Michael Bisham. Fastball misses high, three and one. With this 
Dangerous top of the order coming up. You do not want to walk the go-ahead run on base. 3-1 fouled off. 3-2 and two now on Malahi. Here's the payoff pitch. Spiked it. Ball four. One on, one out. Connor Lewis and Dayton Taylor on deck. These two have gotten on base five out of the eight times they've been up to the plate. And that's going to do it for Michael Bisham. His brother Matt going to relieve him at the top of the eighth inning when we return on Schlick Sports. Attention sports fans of Southwest Jacksonville. Are you prepared to defend against the greatest opponent of our time? I'm not talking about a rival team. I'm talking about cyber threats. Did you know that in 2023, over 60% of small to mid-sized businesses experienced a cyber attack and only 14% were considered prepared to handle the attack? Don't let one setback sideline your success. Here to help is CMIT Solutions of Southwest Jacksonville your local IT managed services provider for small to mid-sized businesses in and around Southwest Jacks. Tune in to our free podcast on cybersecurity where we break down the complex threats in just 15 minutes per episode. Make the most of your drive time and defend your business like a champion. Stay safe, stay secure. Find us on YouTube at youtube.com slash at CMITSWJacks. Time now for a pitching change brought to you by Brightway Insurance, the Baselli Agency. Matt Bisham on in relief of now Michael here with 11. one away and one, one on hits. in top of the eighth inning. Bisham making his second relief appearance of the season. The sophomore for Creekside this year in five games has gone 21 and two thirds, two and one record in the ERA at 193. Strikes out a lot of hitters. For the most part, dominant on the mound. Runner goes. He'll take second. It's Connor Lewis, top of the order, greeting Matt Bisham. 1-0. I think that one could have been called a strike, but Strump was trying to get in position to throw the runner out and couldn't really get a frame on. It's 1-0. Lewis has got a runner in scoring position with one away. He's one for two. Singled in the sixth to go along with two walks. Sinker misses. 2-0. 2 0 offering. Down and in, 3-0. No guy you really can pitch around right here. At this part of the order, you got to attack every hitter. The 3-0, strike one. Three balls and a strike. Here it comes. Strike two, full count. After falling behind 3-0, Matt Bisham looking for a big timeout number two. 3-2 Three, count, here's the pitch. Chopped to second, Morton Fields throw to first in time for out number two. 
Two outs. Runner on third in the top of the eighth. And that brings up Dayton Taylor. Taylor singled in the sixth. Heading into this game, Taylor, like most of this team, been fantastic. 14 RBIs came in batting 429. He's a guy that's going to put the ball in play. Now after this game, now after this game, without the British something accent, That strikeout percentage most likely under 10%. There's strike one. A good slider there from Matt Bisham. 1-1 one, one pitch. That's foul off the foot. One and two on Dayton Taylor. This could be a real kickstart for the Knights. Huge momentum swing here. One, two. Gets to the backstop. And that's going to score a run. 4 3. Base is now empty. Two and two. The 2-2 two -two pitch. Swung on and missed, strike three. But the damage done on the wild pitch. It's 4-3. Flashes lead, trying to close it out in the bottom of the eighth. That one painter, First Coast, is here for your home service needs. We specialize in residential and commercial interior and exterior painting, whole house pressure washing, cabinet refinishing, stucco repair, and more. Call 904-417-3557 for your free estimate today. Time now for a pitching change brought to you by Brightway Insurance, the Baselli Agency. The closer on for the Flashes, Aiden Torres. He's appeared in five games this year. Pitched seven innings, two saves, and the ERA at two. Throws hard with that big 6'6", 220 frame. He's got Martineau, Romeo, and Belizic coming up. Mark, no. 0 for 1 officially with two walks in this game. Just looking to get on base, which is something he's done very well this season. Now, 14 game on base streak. Came into this one with an on base percentage at 480. First pitch misses high and away, 1-0. and oh. 
the 1-0 pitch. Another ball, two balls, no strikes on Ty Martineau. The 2-1, sky down the left field side. That's going to drop foul. Outfield was shifted towards right field, allowing that one to fall. Torres' fastball ranges in the mid-80s, was topped out. Gun to 87 in October by perfect game. 3-1 count on Cy Martineau. Or 3-2, excuse me. Pitch chopped to first. Fielded cleanly. There's out number one. One away and that brings up Nick Romeo hitting for Adam Harvey. Good to see Nick back after an injury. Not bad for the Knights. Able to Number hit four, here for Nick Harvey Romeo. in the eighth inning. First pitch to Romeo. Swung on and missed at the fastball. 0-1. Oh, one pitch, fastball misses inside. Ball and a strike now. Romeo in limited plate appearances this year, hitting 188. Two doubles and an RBI. He's a guy who's got a lot of power up there. One, two count on him though. Here's the pitch. Swung on him, foul back, stays alive. Full lined up in the one two. Curveball out in front of it. He fouls it away. Still one ball, two strikes on Nick Romeo. Here's the pitch. Misses outside, two and two. Belizic on deck. The two two pitch. Swung on and missed strike three. Romeo down on strikes for out number two. And that brings up Belizic. Knights down to their final out. Down, that brings up the third baseman number three, Connor Belizic. First pitch to Belizic. Takes a fastball for ball one. Swung on, out to short, fielded cleanly, throw on to first in time. And the Flashes take an extra innings W over the Creekside Knights by a score of 4-3. The Knights had their chances in this ball game, but in the end, fall in another close heartbreaker at home. For Creekside, you feel that they're right there as a team, but just haven't quite hit their stride yet. A real good St. Joseph Academy team now with their seventh straight win. And the Knights fall to one and five at home, seven and seven on the season. Creekside will not return for another game until senior night next Tuesday. Until then, I'm Noah Schlicksup signing off our final score, 4-3 from Freedom Field. I'll see you next time here on Schlick Sports.